Hey everyone, in today's video I want to share some tips for teaching students how to write their own wordless books. Now I love to teach students about writing wordless books for a couple of reasons. Number one, I like to do it because many times your K through two students can feel pretty intimidated by writing illustrations and drawing illustrations and they may feel like they need to be, you know, an expert illustrator to draw things. So throughout this little type of mini unit I like to do, we share some tips and techniques on drawing stick figures and just getting them started with those illustrations. The second reason I like to teach students about wordless books is as I mentioned in my previous videos about teaching writing in kindergarten, I did two of them, they look like this, here's one. Here's the other, I'll link them below in the description. But in those videos, I make it pretty clear to my youngest writers that the illustrations tell the story. And we can add so much to those illustrations to get the story going along for the reader to understand what's happening before we even add any words to our page. So this type of wordless book unit is something I like to do towards the beginning of the year to give students the foundation of how to add these illustrations and create these illustrations that they'll take and build upon throughout the rest of the year as we go into personal narratives, writing informative pieces, opinions, and all the other fun writing units that we do. So in case you've never done a unit like this before or if you just want some tips and ideas from me, I thought I would make this video sharing a couple of my favorite tips and ideas for teaching this unit to our students. So before we dive in, go ahead and give this video a like, press subscribe so you can see my other videos, and let's get started. Tip one or step number one for teaching students all about how to write wordless books is to immerse them in different types of wordless books. Just like I do for any unit that I teach when I'm teaching writing, the very first day of introducing this new genre is to explain to students what this type of writing is and to show them plenty of examples. So I have shared plenty of wordless books on my site before here on YouTube, so I'm going to share two that I don't think I've shared before. The first is a very popular one, you've probably heard of it, and it is Pancakes for Breakfast by Tomi DePaula. And this is just a classic story of an older woman on a snowy day who is making pancakes for breakfast. But I love this book because they it shows clear examples of breaking up the illustrations and showing an, a sequence of events that happens in order for students to go ahead and take a look at. She also has a problem in the story. She runs out of eggs, so she has to go get the eggs. She runs out of a few things and has to go kind of make a solution to find out where to get everything to make these pancakes. This is also a great one for talking about character emotion because of course there are no words on the page. We see her smiling in the photos until, uh oh, she is sad. She doesn't have whatever she needs and she has to go get it. And this happens over and over in the story. The second word of the story I wanna share is a beautiful one with great illustrations and it is called Rainstorm and this one's by Barbara Lehman. I will link both of these down in the description for you to check out. But this one is a fun one for making up stories and it is about a little boy and it's a really rainy day and he looks like he's searching through his house and when he comes across this little chest here and he opens the chest, he has to like crack it open, and he goes down inside, there's like a ladder into this treasure chest. So this is a fun kind of fantasy one for students to read and really get you know involved in. And again, as you're reading these wordless picture books with your students, you want them to notice what's happening on each of these pages. What story is the author telling here? How is the character feeling? You wanna be asking them these questions so that they become aware of the choices that the illustrator and author are making on this page. I love both of these books for a couple different reasons. Pancakes for Breakfast gets students thinking of ideas for personal narratives that they might write because pancakes, you know, having them for breakfast is a pretty normal activity that many of your kids might have experience with or they can at least think of something else they've had for breakfast or made for breakfast with an adult in their family or someone else in their family. So it just sparks some ideas for narratives they could write and they can share the story of that event. This also can spark some ideas for some informative writing. Of course, this is not an informative writing text, 
but in this book she does kind of walk through the steps of creating pancakes in a how-to type of way. That is not her purpose, but, or his purpose, because it's Tommy DePaula. I was talking about the old woman. But um, it's not the purpose of this book, but it can spark some ideas for thinking of things that we can teach someone else how to do, or at least in an informative way, walk them through the steps of our process. And then Rainstorm, of course, is a great one just for getting students to think outside the box, think in some whimsical and magical kind of adding those types of events to their own story, which is sometimes I find more difficult for my students than them writing their own, this is what happened to me today, or this is what I know about. Having to come up with a completely magical or fantastical idea can be a little difficult for them. So I love this book for that reason. Okay, tip number two for teaching students how to write wordless books is you are going to share with them three different ways and show them how to draw illustrations for three different purposes. First, I like to show them that they can draw illustrations to inform, they can draw illustrations to share their own stories, and they can draw illustrations to make up stories. Now this is supposed to be a mini unit, right? To get students just introduced to this idea of adding illustrations. So I do only spend about two days on each of these different types of wordless illustration. So let me quickly run through a little bit about what I teach during each kind. Here's a teacher modeled example of how I teach students to draw informative illustrations from my SJT writing club. If you've watched my other writing videos, you will know that not only do I include detailed lessons inside the club, but I like to show exactly kind of my think alouds and what I would draw. So here's an example for informative illustrations. And I brainstorm, I kind of think aloud about what I know how to do. I know how to make pancakes. I know about basketball since I played basketball when I was a kid. And I have two cats, so I know how to take care of a cat. So what I would do is I would first choose a topic and then I would just draw what I know about it and I think aloud as I would do it. So here I have a picture of a really big cat and I say things like, oh, cats with long hair need to be groomed with a brush, so I draw a brush. This is me kind of thinking aloud and adding to the picture in front of my students. I say that I know cats need both food and water to stay healthy, so I draw pictures of that. I say, some cats love to be pet, so I draw a hand here petting my cat. I say, cats sleep a lot, and you can learn other information about where my cat sleeps from this illustration, because here I drew a little thought bubble with him sleeping on a bed. And then my own cat, Jarvis, has a fluffy tail, so this picture of a cat that I drew has a fluffy tail. That would be an example of what I would do on the first day. Brainstorm aloud, I would pick one topic, and then just start to draw things I know about the topic that I could teach others through the illustration. On day two of that informative writing, I would teach my students how to add labels. Remember, I said at the beginning of this video that this type of unit is something I want students to take with them throughout the year, and adding labels is such an important thing in K through two classrooms to add more to the story. So this is where I focus on adding labels to that informative illustration. Here's an example. You can see that I suggest saying out loud, I don't know if people would know why I drew this brush over here in the corner. So I'm gonna draw an arrow and label long hair so that way the readers can see, oh, the, this cat has long hair and it might need a brush. I can go ahead and write water and food on the little bowls. I think people probably know it's a bed, but maybe they would think it's a cat bed. So I'm gonna share and write down our bed so that way the readers can see that actually this cat sleeps in our bed and some cats might sleep in your own bed. And then readers might be confused about why there's a big hand here. So I'm going to write rubs and pets next to the hand, just so people will know that the cat is getting pet. The second type of illustration I like to teach students how to draw and explain is that they can share their own stories, and I do this as a precursor to our personal narratives. So here's an example of what that looks like, and you can see that the first technique I like to show them what to do is to actually split up this large box into three different spaces, and this helps them understand that we can share a beginning, a middle, and an end. This also gives them that idea going forward if they have a lot of information on one page that they want to kind of break up and share a little bit more through the illustrations. Then I go ahead and think aloud as I sketch out each part of my story and I do this in kind of small steps and explain what information I'm showing in my illustration. So here you can see I say, okay, well, first thing, my alarm clock goes off in the morning and it's right next to my bed. So there I draw a picture of that. 
First thing I like to do when I wake up is walk downstairs and get some coffee. I keep it next to the fridge so it has an alarm for me so it's already ready when I go downstairs and I even mention how I can smell it and I draw those little lines from the coffee. And then once I have my coffee, I walk into my office door, sit down at my computer and do some work. Now as I'm drawing those illustrations, I'm also just quickly showing students how to draw them by drawing, you know, a circle for a head and just kind of a rectangle for a body. I explain that these are just sketches right now and I really am emphasize that we don't need to be these amazing illustrators just yet, that our sketches are wonderful just the way they are. When teaching students that they can share their own stories, this is where I like to talk about character emotion. I've shared this anchor chart right here in my other couple videos, but I like to show this anchor chart just as a way for students to really see the different emotions in the way that we as illustrators can draw those emotions on our characters' faces. So then I have students go back into their story and add Add emotion to their faces like this. If you pause here on this video, you'll be able to see in the second and third illustrations here, I actually went ahead and drew some lines under my eyes to show how tired I was in that second illustration as I was going to get my coffee. And then I changed my third illustration from something I saw in that character emotion chart. I made myself look really, really happy with a big open smile and my eyes were kind of closed and squinted a little bit because I'm so happy now that I have my coffee. So this is just a great way for them to go back into their story, revise it a little bit before they even know about revision and add those character emotions. Last, I like to share that we can make up our own stories. And again, this is a beginning of the year unit. This is supposed to be a low stress environment for students to share about silly things that they want to. We are just getting started with these illustrations and storytelling. So there shouldn't be too much pressure when teaching this. I like to tell my students that maybe they think aliens are cool and they want to write a story about it or robots or they just want to make up a story of something they wish they could do. So here's an example of what I like to do for that. Here I let students know that I want to write a story about someone who's going fishing and actually as you can see before I even started this I broke up my story into three parts and I showed students a different way. This kind of resembles a comic book where I broke up the page, the big box, into three areas here. Um, just to show them again another way, it doesn't have to be three straight lines, and they can break this up how they want to. And then of course I think aloud each scene of the story where in like, you know, sequential order I explain that my character has a fishing rod and a tackle box because he's going to go fishing. Then I show him on the water with his sailboat. And so I said, so far, you know, it's all pretty normal, something I used to do, but maybe I want a fun, surprising twist at the end. So let's pretend that the thing that was actually moving under the water was a big, huge shark. And so a shark decided to, you know, bite his, bite the fishing rod. And now look at the face that I drew. He's really shocked. Again, this is a fun time to just make up a little story and not have much pressure on writing this whole big thing. They can just draw three illustrations with a fun little twist or surprise at the end. And for this type of illustration, I like to show students how to go back in and add details to their background. So here I show students how we can kind of think about this day. So if I had him going out, I say maybe it's morning time, it's cloudy and the sun is still behind the clouds. Then in the next part of my story, the sun is right above his head. Maybe he's been out there for a while. And then I show in the last one that apparently he's been out there all day because now it's nighttime. And this is, you know, a little more scary too, which adds to the excitement of this big, huge shark coming up. So I decided to make the shark come out at night and added all these stars to the end. So those are just three different types of illustrations that I like to share with my students. And again, those were the model teacher examples. So that's what I am saying aloud and modeling doing in front of the class before students go head back to their own seats and try it out for themselves. Okay, last but not least, step number three is to go ahead and have students share their story. Remember, these are not just illustrations that are meant for nobody. They're not just meant to kind of write it down. It's meant to actually be shared with a reader. So what I like to do is I like to have students actually record these stories. And if you use Seesaw or if you use Flipgrid in the classroom, I know many used it for 
you know, distance learning, but you could also use it in the classroom as well. Students can actually take a picture. They can choose one of those pictures. They could choose all three of those illustration stories, however you want to do it. They can take a picture of it and then use the little microphone to record their own story. And I like to remind them if they're choosing one to inform, then they want to teach us about their topic that they've drawn in their illustration and kind of share all the little details that they've added. And of course, if they are sharing a story, either one that they made up all by themselves or one that has actually happened to them, then I just remind them that they want to tell the story in sequential order so the reader can follow along with what happened first, what happened in the middle, and what happened at the end. Now, of course, if you don't have Seesaw or Flipgrid, there are many other ways that you can have students record their books. I really like to make sure we do this part and we don't skip this part because this shows our students that our stories that we write are meant for an audience. And it also is a great precursor to, again, getting students to start writing their ideas on paper. We know that as students orally rehearse what they want to write, it just gives them many more ideas and they can answer questions from other students and kind of flush out that writing process before they begin actually writing. So if you don't have Seesaw or Flipgrid, you can, of course, if you have a cell phone, you can have them do a little recording file on there, an audio file. You can also find some old tape recorders, I believe, leave a lakeshore and other places like that have some. I think you can even probably get some on off Amazon for a pretty cheap amount that are just like battery operated. And I think there's this app called Cherbot. I don't know if it's an app or a website. I'll link it down below, but I believe that is a kid-friendly audio recording device that you can also have students use. Now you might be wondering why students would have to go ahead and record their stories. Couldn't they just share it aloud in front of the class? And yes, they could, but this whole recording aspect is just one extra level that makes it a little more fun and enticing for students. And they get to listen back to their own story. Often when students are sharing in front of a class, you know, it takes a lot of work. And I know when I'm doing some public speaking, sometimes I feel like I just black out. I don't even know what I said, how it went, until I watch it back. So students often don't have that opportunity to listen to it back or hear it back. So this is a fun way for them to do that. So there you have some ideas for getting your students to write some wordless books in your own K through two classroom. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up so I know. And I'd love to hear from you. Have you ever done a unit like this where you have your students write, you know, a comic book or write a wordless book in any sort of way? If you have, do you find that you enjoy it? Or are you excited to try it out this year in your classroom? Let me know down in the comments. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.